Once the scene of conflict, St. Mary's now extends a warm welcome. Last week, we were on what I would rate as one of the most romantic islands in the world. Powerful, venerable, almost magical, St. Michael's Mount. Now we've come round Mount's Bay to Penzance, and we're shipping out to the Isles of Scilly. The ferry Grimarita is a stocky workhorse of a ship that carries most of the freight that goes to the Scillies. So far, I've only needed the car and motorboats and causeways to get to the islands I've been to. But for the Scillies, it has to be either a plane or a ferry. The trip from Penzance, which is just west of St. Michael's Mount, south and then west to the Scillies, will take about two and a half hours. How the Scillies got their name is lost in Celtic antiquity. They belong now to Prince Charles's Duchy of Cornwall, and we know that ever since the Bronze Age, there have been villages and burial grounds out on these islands that seem to float on the rim of the Atlantic. The Scillies are bigger than all the islands we've been to so far, and they have about 2,000 people. But on the day I arrived at this, the biggest island, St. Mary's, everyone seemed to be getting ready to leave. It's the tourist season, and on St. Mary's, that means boat trips. Just about everything that floats starts loading up, and as one boat fills, another comes to take its place. For young Salonians, it means a job to do and wages to be earned. Mark Hicks bears one of the traditional Salonian names, and he was born and raised and educated here. School leavers in the Scillies have one of the best records of exam results in the country. But once they leave school, the problem for islanders has always tended to be what to do next. Mark, tell me about your job prospects here. Um, there aren't a great deal of prospects, really. I, this, this job is just purely for the summer. Uh, it finishes in the end of October, when the last sort of bird watchers leave. And then it's building, really. The only sort of main industry for us here now is building. Um, and that doesn't hold a lot in like, the current economic climate. Um, I think I'll probably leave. Um, Could you make enough here to buy a home and set up here? The only, the only real way to make enough money here is to be in business for yourself. Um, I don't think there's only one job over here that pays enough to get a 100% mortgage or anything like that. Um, it's a lovely place to live, but work prospects aren't too good. You have to go around your own, your own business really, to get the most out of the island. Mark Hicks is very far from giving up. In his spare time, he's raising funds, sponsored runs, charity concerts, that sort of thing. If he can raise 2,000 pounds, there's a charity which will take him off to work in Africa, far away from the gentle bustle of a St. Mary's morning. It's 10.30 and it's time to leave. This is the moment when everyone goes off on day trips to see the seabirds, to see the seals, to see the off islands. It's the daily diaspora of a Scillies holiday. They're going out from St. Mary's to St. Agnes and St. Martin's, to Tresco and to Briar. I'm sticking here on St. Mary's. I'll go to the off islands next week. 
The almost Caribbean serenity of the islands has sometimes given way to black storms that have sunk whole fleets of ships. But you often do see these tropical colours. They're part of the Scilly's attraction for visitors. One early visitor to the Scillies came ashore in this bay half dead. It was 1707 and a British fleet was coming home in triumph after a great victory over the French when it got lost in fog and blundered into these islands. Ships went down in chaos on the rocks out to the west and 2,000 men were drowned. Their personal trinkets and treasures are still being brought up by divers from silver pieces of eight to this chamber pot made of pewter, and they say it belonged to the Admiral of the Fleet. Now, he was Sir Cloudsley Shovel. He'd taken part in a string of victories at Gibraltar and Malaga and Toulon, and now he was on his way home to a hero's welcome. But his flagship, the Association, was one of the ones that went down, and he was washed ashore here unconscious. He was found by a Salonian woman, and she noticed an emerald ring on his finger. She whacked the Admiral over the head, took the ring, and buried him here in the sand. It all came to light 30 years later because she confessed on her deathbed. The Admiral's bones were dug up, and he was given a tomb in Westminster Abbey. But that emerald ring was never returned. It probably stayed in the Scillies. These days, Salonian hospitality is less deadly. This is the Sunday when they invite visitors to join them in the annual service for their lifeboat. Richard Lethbridge comes from a lifeboat family. Of the eight men in the lifeboat's crew, at one time, six were Lethbridges. There was a time when Salonians used to whisper a special prayer. O oh Lord, we would not that there should be wrecks, but if there must be wrecks, wilt thou send them to Scilly for the benefit of the poor inhabitants? In his lifeboat days, Richard made hundreds of trips out into the seas around the Scillies. There was always work for the crew, always maydays and SOSs to send them whooshing down the slip from the lifeboat house with sparks flying beneath them. One of Richard's rescues was of a television crew who chartered a small ship to do some filming. The ship was called the Braemar, and she started taking in water and listing badly. When they reached the stricken Braemar, a big ship was already there and her men were trying to get a tow rope across. So we then connected up a tow between them and the Braemar. But as soon as she put power on to try and tow her, by God, she nearly towed her under. She ripped the bollards out of the deck of her, you know, all the bits and everything. We said, look, stop, stop. You're not going to do it. You're going to break her up. She's going to pull to pieces. So they, all right, cast off the tow again, and we'll try it ourselves. And we started to tow her. Well, there were times when everything was against us. And the Braemar's rudder had jammed. He couldn't steer her at all. So she was craving to windward all the time. She was almost broadside on across our stern. So we had to take it very, very carefully. By this wind, this time, the wind had increased up to Fort Letton. And we were somewhere then south of the Wolf, down here, near, halfway between here and Benzant. So we started towing for Newland, and we towed her for 13 and a half hours with it up to Fort Leaven. And late at night, the last message we had from Wolf Rock Lighthouse was they were going up to put the shutters on the lighthouse windows to stop the sea breaking the windows. So you can imagine what the weather was like. I don't know the right height of Wolf Rock, but it must be somewhere under three feet or more. When it came to getting the, the television crew off, yeah. you had to help them off. Oh, sort of literally pulled the them off. Well, there was one lady in the in the crew I know in the 
television crew, and we were, I mean, we were quite rough with her. We, we manhandled her aboard, literally. And after it was, we had them all aboard, and the 16 of them aboard, and we were towing again. I went down to make sure if there was anybody injured. And I said, no, there's nobody injured. And I looked at this lady, and I said, I'm sorry, dear, that we handled you roughly. She said, I could throw my arms around your neck. She said, I'm so delighted to be away from there. She said, I love you. Can you imagine living anywhere else but silly? No. No, they'll have to <laughs> shoot me to get me out. <laughs> Not everyone is passionately fond of Silly. One critic dismissed it all as just a couple of thousand alcoholics clinging to some rocks in the Atlantic. Well, this may not be paradise. The rents are high, the hotels are expensive, and you pay a lot to get here as well. But people come back time and again. And just about every Salonian I met, and every visitor, loved the place. And it's not hard to see what it is that turns people into silly files. A lot of people would like to be Salonians, or at least to live here. You get all the shops and the pubs and the clubs of a fair-sized population. And at the same time, you get a considerable degree of peace. This is the main street, and this is as close as they ever get round here to rush hour. There's another attraction to life in the Sillies, law and order. Constable Ken Hamlin is half of the permanent police force, though in the season there are two extra men to bring the strength up to four. The day visitors are about to be taken home to the mainland on the passenger ferry. It's a, a regular part of your day to come and see the ship off, isn't it? It's a regular part of the day to actually um, see the ship in or, or away, you know, just to see who's coming ashore and uh, if there's any shady characters you know, possibly we may recognise. <laughs> Have you ever now. spotted one? Uh, not really, no, no. But I mean, there are dubious uh, looking people. Um, you sort of keep an eye on them, you know, check whether they're on day trips or they're actually uh, coming to stay on the island. Day trippers are not so bad, you know, you come down and make sure they get back off again at uh, half past four or four, uh, four o'clock. What's the worst crime you've had to deal with in your time here? Uh, a, a chap came down from uh, Exeter, I think probably with somebody else, with stolen check cards. And uh, they went around to two or three uh, places on the uh, shops on the island here and purchased items uh, were using the uh, stolen check cards. Fortunately, they went into a restaurant and uh, somebody wasn't too happy with the card and um, called us down. That's and, the worst uh, you've had to deal with? Yes, yeah. In yeah. how many years? Two years I've been here now. Yeah, just tough, coming on. Tough posting, isn't it? Uh, it's a tough posting. I can count the number of jobs. I think really that uh, um, crime-wise I've dealt with uh, on probably uh, one hand. Right here, in the Sillies, a policeman's lot is not a busy one. Ken's arduous beat continues. There was a crime last year. A local stole some cash from a food shop. But the criminal went and spoiled everything by leaving the money in a bag on the sergeant's doorstep. But now, Ken has a hot lead. He's had a report of someone sleeping out in the open. As you appreciate, the, the islands are owned by the duchy, so they have a certain amount of power whereby uh, they can dictate that um, sleeping rough is, is illegal. But you didn't find anybody? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Once again, no crime. Well, you know, that's a good thing anyway, actually. Right. It's a lovely evening, isn't it? Ah, it's just lovely. It's really calm. Your soul living here, I should think. Wonderful, wonderful. Very calming. One, two, three. Every Friday night, there's a competition which might have something to do with the complete absence of crime. The young men of the islands get to burn up the energy that, in, say, Birmingham, might go into joyriding in other people's cars. The slender boats, the gigs, 
go back to a time when islanders raced to be the first to reach incoming ships to sell their services as pilots through the perils of Salonian waters. And some of the boats go back a long way. This one, the Tsar, has been going since 1879. Here she is in 1910, already 31 years old. And today, more than 80 years later, she's still going strong. Tonight, it's all men. There's Mark Hicks. But on Wednesday nights, the island's women take over the boats and do the racing. Mark Hicks's crew come nowhere tonight. They're going to have to train harder. But Mark's fundraising effort is going really well. He's getting close to success in that bid to get to Africa. He did. He was telling me once they had to come down from St. Martin in a gig to get the doctor. Life in the Sillies attracts a lot of settlers from the mainland. Harold Wilson is a notable one. There's a running debate, it's probably a sign of island pride, about exactly who is entitled to call himself a Salonian and who is not. On Saturday mornings, the models and tools in a workshop just off the main street are put aside, and you can get a haircut from a man whose credentials as a Salonian nobody would dispute, Sam Ellis. In the chair today, a settler of five years standing. But there's a lot of um, interpretation as to what is an, who, is an, who is a Silonian? Uh, how do you, in, what, what's your view? Who do, you, do, you, do we have to have three generations? You have oh, to no, as long as your parents were born. As long as your yeah, parents yeah. were born. Right. You take someone like John Watts up at the airport, and I was talking to him the other day, and he said, well, his father was born here, yeah. but his mother wasn't, but his family go back to the 16th century. So, oh, well, he would be more or less recognized as a Silonian. Even though his mother wasn't yes, uh, born yeah. here? So you say as long as your parents are born here, or, uh, you know, certainly yes, one of your parents yes. are born here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you we would know. accept you. The client in the salon used to be managing director of a multinational company. He was based in Texas and London till he opted out and came to Scilly. Now George Tiedman owns a hotel. He leads tour groups around the islands, and he also broadcasts about the Scillies. Someone recently inquired of me the definition of a true Salonian. Well, I'm not a Salonian and can never aspire to become one. Those of us who have arrived here from the mainland, however much we love Scilly and feel proud and privileged to live here, we can only ever be termed islanders. No, to be a true Salonian, you must have been born on these islands of Salonian parents, and the purest insist on Salonian grandparents. For the last word on Salonianness, in their corner of the Garden of Eden, which I'm beginning to think the Sillies is, I came to see Richard and June Lethbridge. Their roots go very deep. June Lethbridge's grandparents were all born on one or other of the islands, and Richard's line goes back to the island called Samson, which hasn't been inhabited for 130 years now. What does he think it takes to qualify as a Salonian? I think you'd, if you're going to call anyone a Salonian, they'd have to go back to, well, at least a couple of generations, I think, to, you know, to really be worthy of a, a Salonian. If I said to you, you're not a Salonian, prove it, what would you say? Well, I'd say you could trace one side of the family back early 1800s, probably. On the other side, you could go back almost as far as Silly goes. If somebody told you that you couldn't live on your island anymore, mm. what would you feel? Panic-stricken. 
I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. I, I would probably, you know, pack up wanting to live, really, because this is this is this is home. So it. At the Coast Guard Tower, there's one more piece of fundraising for the Salonian who's leaving it all behind. Mark has found enough sponsors for this stunt to get him to his target and sent him off to work for that charity in Tanzania. He's travelled before on holidays and holiday jobs, but this time he'll be gone far and long from the island where he's grown up. I couldn't have had a better childhood here. Um, a lot of people think that the people here are quite sheltered, but to an extent, because it's an island and everybody is so friendly, from a very early age, you're going off on your own, playing on the beach, playing in boats, um, and different things like that. So, to an extent, you're used to being independent. Why do you think that we are fascinated by islands? What is it? I don't know. It's, it's... Some people liken living on an island to a village, but to an extent, when you're in a village, you can jump in a car, drive away, and you can actually get away from it. Here, there are you know, often days where you're trapped, you can leave even if you wanted to. Um, and the beauty of it all, it, you know, it's so beautiful. Mm. I've been to about eight or nine countries in my life, and I've yet to see a beautiful, more beautiful place than Scilly. Mm. Okay. Well, good luck in Africa. Thank you. At the end of the day on St. Mary's, the nightlife is a do-it-yourself affair. In the pubs, they sing the kind of songs that turn everyone into instant Pavarotti's. That's it for the main island, St. Mary's. Now we're heading away to the off islands. On the trip out is the former mayor of the cities. They actually call them chairman of the council here. And he's got big plans for the island of St. Martin's tonight. I think it's very right tonight. What's it all about? Just what are they going to do on the island tonight? Join us here next week and come out to St. Martin's and see. <laughs>